الحمد لله الحمد لله أحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أحدي أبدي أزلي لا بداية له ولا نهاية له لا مثل له ولا مثال له ولا تت له ولا نت له نحمده حمدا كثيرا ونشكره شكرا عظيما نصلي ونسلم على شمس الدها بدر الدجا صدر العلا نور الهدى جد الحسن والحسين مولانا ومولى الثقل ابي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله نور من نور الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين وبارك وسلم ابدا ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد سبحان الذي اسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من اياتنا انه هو السميع البصير امنت بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم حضرات مل کر بابا جی بلند ضرور سے اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاه والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا شفيع المذنبين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا إمام الأنبياء والمرسلين Bismillahirrahmanirrahim After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending infinite salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives the revival of our hearts, the inspire to our minds the awakening of our souls the most honored one, the most elevated one, the most revered one, none other than Sayyiduna wa Nabiuna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallama. As we are going through the blessed month of Rabiul, blessed month of Rajabul Murajab, it is quite necessary and important for us that we understand the greatness and the virtues of this month. One of the greatest events in the life of Rasulullah took place in this month, Rajab al That event in which many great lessons are learned Many misconceptions are clarified. An occasion where the maqam of Rasulullah is illustrated to the people. Nabi Salah and maqam is manifested to his ummah and all the creation. That night, that great night, that falls on the day of Friday, the 27th of Rajab al -Muraja. A couple of years before Hijrat to Medina Munawwara, after Salat al-Isha, <coughs> Nabi alayhi salat al was invited, was called for, 
and was brought to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest honors and accolades were bestowed upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this night. Allah Ta'ala in the glorious Qur'an talks about this in two Qur'an specific places. The first is the 17th Surah of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Isra, where Allah Ta'ala talks about the Isra. And in the 53rd verse, 53rd Surah of the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Najm, Allah Almighty talks more about the Mi'raj. This great journey that took place in the life of Rasulullah Wasallam. it is necessary and important that now, in the 21st century, that young ulama, British-born English speakers, translate, explain, and make understand the youngsters about the importance of this night. What Allah Ta'ala gave to Nabi Ali Salaam on this night and what He gave to the Ummah of Rasulullah Ali Salaam on this night. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the glorious Quran said Subhanallahi Asra Bi Abdihi The Paak hai wo Pure is He Glorified is he, Asrabi Abdihi, who took his slave and servant, Layla, during a short part of the night, Minal Masjid al Haram, from Masjid al Haram in Makkah Mukarrama, Ilal Masjid al Aqsa, to Masjid al Aqsa in Jerusalem, Quds Sharif, Alladhi Barakna Hawla, that masjid whose surrounding whose earth gird, whose surroundings are mubarak and blessed. Why? What is the maqsad of this night? لِنُرِيَهُ <laughs> مِنْ So that we may show him our signs. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيرُ الْبَسِيرُ Indeed, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, Samir al-Basir, he is the one who hears everything and can see everything. This is the Lafzi Tarjuma, literal translation of this great ayat of the Quran. Inshallah, Aziz, in the next few moments, I want to talk about a few fawaid, benefits, lessons that we learn from these glorious verses of the Quran. As I mentioned, this great journey, this great occasion took place in Nabi Ali Salatu Salam's life. Before Hijrah, Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was resting in the Hatim. There are Mukhtalif Riwayat, different narration. Some say Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was resting in their own house. Some have said they were resting in Hazrat Ali Shere Khuda's sister's house, Umme Hani. Some say Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was resting against Al Hajar al Aswad, the black stone. But the majority and the mashhur code and jamhur opinion is that Nabi Ali Salaam was resting in the Hatim. The Hatim is situated next to the Kaaba Baytullah Sharif. If you go to Masjid Al Haram and you go inside, you do tawaf around the Kaaba. But there is a semicircle that is there that you have to do tawaf around it as well. This area that is cornered off by the semicircle, this area is known as the Hatim. <laughs> Nabi Ali Salatu Salam said, whoever reads his namaz in this area, it is as if he has read his namaz in Kaaba Baytullah. <laughs> this area is known as the Hatim. Nabi Ali Salam is resting there. Allah Ta'ala sends Sayyidina Jibreel. With Hazrat Mikail and a Barat, a Urani Barat of 70,000 Frishtay and Eid. Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala sends Hazrat Jibreel to go.
go and bring Rasulullah to him. And they said, go to Bahisht. Go to Bahisht and go and find and pick one Burak. And this Burak is what's going to accompany and bring my Habib to me. Hazrat Jibreel went to Bahish. Understand Bahish in modern day terms. In Jannatul Firdaus as a place where all the Buraks are there. Understand that there is a showroom of Buraks. No showroom. Mercs, BM, Audis, Ranges, Nissan, Michael. Showroom of cars in the dunya. There was a showroom of Buraks in Jannah. This showroom of Buraks, 40,000 Buraks are in there. As then Jibreel sees one Burak. There is one Burak that's crying. As then Jibreel asks the Burak, why are you crying? The Burak said that ever since Allah Ta'ala made me, we have heard and we have been told that there will be one Burak that will be selected to be, bring Sayyidul Anbiya al Mursali to Allah. <laughs> Ever since I have heard this, I have cried making dua and doing iltija to Allah. Ibari Ta'ala, let me have this fakhas. <laughs> let me have this maqam that I bring Rasulullah to you. <laughs> Ever since then, this is why I've been crying. As a Jibreel selected this burak. Allah Ta'ala said, take it. What is the burak? The burak. The word bura is from the word bark. Barkun means what? Lightning. Bark means light. Lightning. Why is the bura called bura? Because the speed of the bura is quicker than the speed of light. That's why he was known as bura. Nabi Salam was selected. Or this bura was selected. Nabi Islam described this Burak that the Burak is bigger than a donkey, smaller than a horse. It has two wings and its face is like, it resembles a human face. And when he takes a step, his one step is as far as his eye can see. As far as his eye can see. This is the Burak when he takes a step, as far as the eye can see, the Murad is selected. Hazrat Jibreel, Hazrat Bikai, 70,000 angels arrive. Nabi Salaam is resting in the Hatim after Namaz e Isha. These angels arrive. Allahu Akbar. How the Sha'iri, the poets have described this manzar. They've described this great occasion, the scene at that time. When Hazrat Jibreel says to Nabi Ali Salaam, where you go? The angels were thinking, is he asleep or is he awake? Nabi Ali Salaam opened their eyes and they said, my eyes are closed, but my heart is awake. I never sleep. I eat. There is not a single moment in the life of Rasulullah where they are ghafil of Allah Ta'ala. Never. They are always hazard in the presence of Allah Almighty. Connect me. Me and you can go into ghaflat. But Sayyidul Anbiya al Mursaleen is always connected to Allah. Even when they are what seems as though to me and you asleep. There have been times when Nabi Ali Salatu Salam woke up and they would read the Fajr. They wouldn't do wudu. Why? Because wudu for the one who sleeps. <laughs> the one who doesn't sleep, how can he make wudu? <laughs> yani this is a mu'jiza. This is a miracle of Rasulullah Ali Salam. They would say, the Aisha said they would get up, go read Fajr, come back. Because the one who goes to sleep, there is a condition he makes wudu. Nabi Ali Salatu Salam's eyes were closed, but they were always connected to Allah. The angels opened the chest of Rasulullah Salam. They took out Nabi Ali Salatu Salam's heart. And Hazrat Mikail was holding a golden tray with Ma'i Zamzam. 
Zamzam water from Jannah inside. And then they put their heart into that. Ulama have described this. They said, what was this? This was Nabi Ali Salaam's heart. That heart which is already pure was being purified even more. The heart, because we don't believe that Nabi Ali Salaam's heart is impure. How can it be? His heart is the most pure heart. There is no heart like his heart. So we can't say Nabi Ali Salaam, al Billah, their heart was dirty. Their heart was unclean. No, their heart was clean. It was pure. So what was it? It was purification above purification. Purifying upon purifying, the ulama have described. Nabi Ali Salat was salat, as the Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah Ta'ala has sent me and has told me to tell you, Inna Rabbaka na yastaku ilayhi. Jibreel, go tell my Habib that I want to see him. Indeed, your Lord is yearning to meet you, to see you. Allahu Akbar. Let's look at Maqam Mustafa. Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam stood on Qoyatul, Mount Sinai. It is a very famous mu'jiza of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and his maqam that he spoke to Allah Almighty directly. He is known as Musa Kalimullah, the one who spoke to Allah directly. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam spoke, what did he then say? Say, Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. Ya Allah, let me see you now. I've spoken to you, but Didar, speaking, hearing, and actually seeing, two different things. Ya Allah, let me see you. Rabbi Arini, Anzur Ilaih, show me your majesty so that I may see you. Allah Ta'ala said, Musa, if one tajalli, one understand atom of my majesty that falls on this mountain and you can handle this if you can handle this then I will unveil my majesty to you when this tajalli fell on the mountain the mountain was destroyed and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam saw it he fell unconscious when he woke, Allah Ta'ala said, Lan tarani Musa, you will never get to see Allah Akbar. Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, let me see you. Show me your majesty. And maqam of Habibullah, that's Kalimullah. <coughs> Kalimullah said, can I see you? Allah Ta'ala said, you'll never get to see me in the dunya. What's maqam of Habibullah? Rasulullah alayhi salam, can Nabi Ali Salaam didn't ask to see Allah. They didn't ask. But Allah Ta'ala said, Jibreel, bring him to me. I want to see him. You bring him to me. I want to see him. Musa Ali Salaam said, Ya Allah, let me see you. Allah said, never. Nabi Ali Salaam didn't even ask. And Allah Ta'ala said, Jibreel, go tell him, Inna Rabba Kala Yastaf Ilayh. Can Jibreel go tell him, your Lord is yearning to meet you, see him. Allah, what do you think that maqam is an ordinary maqam? You think that station is a normal station? This rank is the greatest rank. Allah, Akbar. Nabi alayhi salatu salam, Hazrat Jibreel, Hazrat Mikail, Burak, 70,000 Nurani Frishte, Barak of angels are going with Rasulullah. Nabi alayhi salam sat on the Burak. How quick is the burak quicker than the speed of light? If the burak is quicker than the speed of light, as the Jibreel is holding the reins, then what do you think the speed of Rasulullah is who is sitting on the burak? The Bili Salaam didn't slip. They didn't fall off. The Bili Salaam had control over the burak. People say the Bili Salaam is normal like me and you. Go and you sit on the burak and tell me. Now tell me if the Quran will even come to you. Who are you? What is the great maqam of Allah? Allah. Nabi Ali Salaam stopped off a different maqam. They stopped off at Bethlehem. Bethlehem. They made dua there and naqab 
They stopped off and passed by Maratul Bikabri, Musa. I passed by Musa at Talimullah's grave. Musa is standing in his grave reading namaz. Let me make one subtle point here. When did Musa pass away? Who came first? Sayyidina Habibullah, Rasulullah or Sayyidina Musa? Musa. After Musa came, Isa. After Isa came, Rasulullah came. Hazrat Musa came over 2000 years before Nabi Ali Salaam. Musa passed away. Remember what happened when Musa was going to leave the dunya? Angel of death came to him. And he said, I'm going to take your life, Musa Ali Salaam. Khan did one. <laughs> what? You want to take my life? No way. It's not going to happen. Mount Ghazali because. Hazrat Malik al Maut. Alayhi salam, he went back to Allah with his eyes and said, Ya Allah, Musa punched me. <laughs> Musa is known. When Nabi Alayhi salam described Musa Alayhi salam, they said he was a man who had a lot of hair. They look, they described him in the hadith of Isra al Mi'raj. They said, I see Musa. He was a man with white complexion, not a lot of hair. And he was a man who was known for his jalal. He's known for his jalal. And such jalal that he punched the angel of death. This was Jalal. Then Allah, Allah said, look, take hairs of the back of a calf. How many other hairs there are, that's how long you will live. Ulama have written the Asrar, why did Musa salam punch the angel of death? To educate him and teach him Adam. <laughs> what Adam? When you go to Sayyidul Ambiya, you are Mursaleen, Barqa. And you're going to go and take his soul. Make sure you take ijazat before you come. I'm teaching you. <laughs> when he came to Nabi Ali Salam's time, Hazrat Jibreel came with Malakulmo. What did they do? They knocked on the door for ijazat to him. <laughs> Musa Ali Salam, one of the wisdoms, why he punched him was that Adab. When you go to Baghdad Rasulullah Ali Salam, Maqam Mustafa, make sure you have respect to them. You're not taking the soul of ordinary people now. This was Nabi, Salaam, Nabi Musa Salaam, teaching the angel of death. What are the wisdoms the ulama have come from? Sayyidina Musa is standing in his grave reading namaz. He died 2000 years before his death. Dead people are gone, finished. But he's reading what? Namaz? Allah Akbar, Ajeeb. He's reading namaz in his grave. <laughs> Ajeeb, isn't it? I told Musa is dead. If Musa, I told the prophets died. You can't go to the prophets, make dua there. The prophets aren't alive in their grave. If the prophets aren't alive in their grave, then why is Nabi Ali Salaam telling me and you that Musa Ali Salaam wasn't laying down, he wasn't sitting up, he was standing in his grave. And he wasn't just standing there, he was standing there reading namaz. You said if he could read. Why did Nabi Ali Salaam say this? They said this because they knew that after their time there will come people who will say, Aliyahu Billah, the prophets of Allah are dead. And to clarify and remove this, Nabi Ali Salaam said, I passed by Musa's grave. I see Musa standing in his grave reading Namaz even after his death. <laughs> Our Akidah is not found upon no Peer Sahab's own. Akidah is not proven through Peer Sahab, Imam Sahab, Allama Sahab, Fahamma Sahab, Khatib Sahab. No. Akidah is from Allah and His Rasul, Quran and Sunnah. And who is telling you that Musa was reading Namaz in his grave? Sayyidul Ambiya Iwan Musa. Nabi Ali Salaam is telling you. Why are they telling you this? Why this point? Why not anything else? They're telling you this point again. So that people know that after the prophets of Allah might pass away, they are alive in their graves and they still read namaz to Allah. <laughs> Some ulama have said, why was Musa standing in his grave? Because he stood out of adab and ihtaram for Rasulullah. <laughs> adab and ihtaram, he stood up. He folded his hand and he read the roots. This is what the ulama have said, one of the wisdoms why qa'imun, he was standing in his grave. Allah, Yusalli, one ma'na of Yusalli is Salam. Rudan Salam. 
He was standing in his grave reading Durud and Salaam to Rasulullah. If Hazrat Musa Ali Salaam stands up and reads Durud and Salaam, and brothers and sisters who are listening, we can stand up and send Durud and Salaam as well. Allah Nabi Ali Salaam to Salaam, from there quickly, they arrived at Masjid al Aqsa. <coughs> When they arrived at Masjid al-Aqsa, this journey from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa is known as Isra. This is known as Isra. From Masjid al-Aqsa to the seven heavens, to Sidrat al-Muntaha, Arsha ilahi Kaaba, Kosaini, Odana, this is known as Miraj. Isra means journey. Miraj means ascension, Uruj. Allahu Akbar. This is why this night is known as the night of Al-Isra. والمعراج نبي علیہ السلام عرائب مسجد الاقصى وائے مسجد الاقصى وائے نا مسجد نبوی at that time مسجد نبوی didn't exist مسجد نبوی was made and established after hijrah this واقعہ اکیم before hijrah اللہ حق نبی علیہ السلام وائے مسجد الاقصى because Masjid Al-Aqsa is Al-Qibla Al-Ula. This was the first Qibla of the Muslims, Qibla Al-Awwal. That's one of the Hikmahs. Second, Masjid Al-Sani. Second Masjid to have ever been built. The first Masjid to be built in the world, Masjid Al-Haram. Then which, 40 years after Masjid Al-Aqsa, Masjid Nabawi, Masjid Quba, Masjid Qibla, then all these came after. They came after. Masjid al-Aqsa, the second mosque to have ever been built on this land. Masjid al-Aqsa. Allazi barakna hawla. That we have blessed its surroundings. Its ird gird is mubarak. Ulamah bichu, why is it mubarak? Why is Masjid al-Aqsa blessed? It is blessed because it has nisbah to many anbiya in the salat. Masjid al-Aqsa is a blessed mosque because of its connection to the prophets that went there. Allahu Akbar. Nabi Alayhi Salaam arrived at Masjid Al-Aqsa. Hazrat Jibreel tethered, tied the Burak to the Wailing Wall. Wailing Wall tied it there. Nabi Alayhi Salaam and Hazrat Jibreel entered into the Masjid. So ulama have said this imamat occurred after Uruj. Some say, and majority say, it occurred قبل الأروج before the أروج then before أروج إمامة then it was it الله أكبر نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم arrived in the masjid إيك لاك توبيس هزار كمو بيش hundred and twenty four thousand أنبياء and رسل prophets and messengers are all standing there physically standing there with arwah ma'al jasr they are standing there all the prophets Ibrahim alayhi salam Adam alayhi salam Nuh alayhi salam Musa alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam Ishaq alayhi salam Dawud alayhi salam Zakri alayhi salam Suleiman alayhi salam Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam Yaqub alayhi salam Ayyub alayhi salam all the prophets every single prophet is there present and messenger all standing, waiting. Who's going to do Imam? No prophet is coming forward. Remember, Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salaam has arrived in Masjid, all the prophets are there. Allahu Akbar. When Nabi Alayhi Salaam arrived into the Masjid, as it Jibreel said, you are the Imam of the Prophet. You will lead them in prayer. Brothers and sisters, as it Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Salaam Khalil Rahman, best friend of Allah, he was worthy to be the Imam. Adam alayhi salam, Abu al-Bashar, father of man, worthy to be the Imam. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Najiullah, Allah rescued him, worthy to be Imam. Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, Shatr al-Husan, half of Husan and Jamal, worthy to be Imam. Hazrat Musa Kalimullah spoke to Allah, he could have been Imam. Hazrat Isa Ruhullah, 
the one who Allah Almighty blew his ruh into, where the heart of our worthy to be. No. None of them stood forward. Adam waited. Nabi Salatu Salam was taken to the Musalla and said, Today, you tonight, you will lead every single prophet and messenger in two rakat prayers. <laughs> Allah Akbar. Just a point. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah he said what? What is the shirt of Imamat? The conditions of Imamat is what? The one who has the most knowledge. If they are all equal in knowledge, the one who reads the best. If they are all equal in recitation, the one who is the most pious. If they are all equal in piety, the one who is the most beautiful looking. If they are all equal in beauty, then the one who is beautiful face and Jamal and Hussain. Any of these conditions, if it came to knowledge, no one had more knowledge than Rasulullah If it came to taqwa, no one had more praise and taqwa than Rasulullah If it came to husna salt, beauty in voice, nobody recited better than Rabi If it came to husna and jamal, beauty, nobody was more beautiful than Rasulullah Because the, that person should be the imam who has the most knowledge. And who had the most knowledge? Rasulullah he led them all in prayer. Every single prophet. On this night, Nabi Salaam was bestowed the great accolade and honor and title, Imamul Anbiya Ibn Musan. The Imam of all the prophets and messengers. Allahu Akbar. Let every single prophet and messenger, the greatest of the greatest creation, Ashraf al is who? Human, insan. And the khayrul insan, the best of all insan who? Anbiya or Rusul. And the best of all Rusul and Anbiya is Sayyidul Anbiya in Rusul. No one will let them in prayer. This is why Allah Hazrat Azim al Barakat. Imam Ali Sunnah said, Sabse Ola wa Allah, Amara. Sabse Bala wa Allah, Apne Mola ka Piyara. Dono Alam ka Dula. Allah. Sabse Aula or Ala. Amara. Allah has said the one who is Aula and Ala, the one who is greatest and the highest for all the Prophet, Amara Nabi is our Prophet. Because he led every Prophet in prayer. <coughs> Allah. I only have three minutes left. And the journey from here has not even begun yet. Uruj hasn't even occurred. We are still on Isra. After. After. They want me to carry on. <laughs> After Imamat was done, every prophet stood up and gave khutbah. Bayan takrib. Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam stood up. All praise is to Allah. Who took me as his khalif, made me his best friend, who saved me from the fire, <coughs> who gave me Ismail and Ishaq, Allah Akbar. Then every prophet would stand up and praise Allah Almighty. Hazrat Musa is allowed to do. He said, All praises to Allah Almighty, who made me Kaleem, who told me, he spoke to me directly. Who chose me for the chosen nation? Who gave me the Torah? All praises to Allah Almighty. Who rescued my people from Fir'aun on my hand? As an Isa alayhi salam stood up. As an Isa alayhi salam said, All praises to Allah Almighty. Who created me like my father Adam without any father? Who blew his ruh into me like you blew into Adam? Remember, Adam and Islam had no father and no mother. He had no father and no mother. But he is the father of everyone. Hazrat Isa Ali Salaam Salaam had a mother but no father. All praises to Allah who taught me the Torah and the Injil. I memorized these and every other book. All praises to Allah Almighty. This is the bayan, this is the takrir they gave. They were praising Allah. 
Oh, praises to Allah Almighty who gave me the miracle that I could bring the dead back to life. I could cure the leper from leprosy. I could restore the eyesight of the blind. Everyone has been there by Every Nabi has spoken and praised Allah. Nabi Ali Salaam stood up and they said, All of you praise Allah Almighty, but Allah Almighty praises me. <laughs> Every one of you has praised Allah, but Allah praises me. Look at that maqam. You've all stood up and said, All praises to Allah who gave me, who gave me, who gave me. But I am telling you, I am standing up. All of you have praised Allah, but Allah praises me. That's why he's named me Muhammad, the most praised. Allah. Allah. Then they said, <coughs> All praises to Allah Almighty. That all of you were sent to your own people. He sent me to everyone. All of you are rahmat to your own people. And he sent me rahmat lil alameen. Mercy to everyone. All praises to Allah Almighty who revealed the Furqan, the Quran upon me. All praises to Allah Almighty that He gave me Al Ummatul Wasata. He gave me the moderate nation, the middle people. All praises to Allah, the just Ummah, the Ummah of Prezhari, the Ummah of Adal and Insaf. All praises to Allah Almighty who made my Ummah best Ummah from all the Ummahs. Allah Akbar. When you stand in front of the king, you don't remember nobody, you only praise yourself. True or not true? If I want to score a point, I only say, me, 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 me. Bilal Tashbih wa Tamsi. Without any comparison. Every Nabi stood up and they said about themselves. Nabi Ali Salaam stood up and they said about the Ummah. They spoke about me and you. On this occasion, they spoke about me and you. They said, my ummah is the best ummah. My ummah is an ummah of Adal and Insaf. There is no ummah like my ummah. Allahu Akbar. Nabi Ali Salam didn't forget us at this point. Allahu Akbar. When the bayans were done, Nabi Ali Salam, Hazrat Jibreel, ascended. My time has come up. I don't know if I should carry on or if I should stop. Because everywhere I have gone to do this bayan, I have always stopped at Masjid al-Aqsa. Nobody let me go first. <laughs> Yakin. Everywhere. And I felt next year I will come back and do from Masjid al-Aqsa to Kaaba Kosen. Because it is such a long narration. There is so much we learn from this story. So much we learn from this waqia. Your aqidah will become pukhta. Firm. You will not be able to dispute. If you want to learn about who Rasulullah is, then it is on this night that we should learn about who he is. So this is the night when Nabi Ali Salaam's maqam was at its peak, greatest. And Allah truly knows us. Nabi Ali Salaam was lifted to the heavens. Nabi Ali Salaam Salam was lifted to the heavens. As the Jibreel, they were ascended to the heavens. The distance between the earth and the first heaven, first Asman, it would take you 500 years on a horse to reach the earth. That's the distance. And between each Asman, it is the same 500 year distance. Nabi Ali Salaam Salam. I am going to cut it short. Many things will be missed out. For example, there was an ocean. There is a bahar between the dunya and the asman. And all this, this bahar was open for Rasulullah Islam. Nabi Salaam Salaam said, and the ulama have written, that a samundar, samundar of the dunya, the bahar for Musa Islam, This one ocean that Musa Ali Salam opened of the dunya, the ocean that is between the heavens and the earth, opened for Rasulullah Salam. Nabi Salam 
ascending. The Mirage begins as the Jibreel is with them. And they knock on the first gate of Jannah. Who is it? Jibreel. Man ma'ak. Who is with you? Muhammad Rasulullah. Because who is that? Has he been sent? Of course he's been sent. Open. Nabi Rishab enters. Look what did Allah Ta'ala say. لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِ So we may show him our ayat. Ayah here means what? It is the Jama ayat. So we may show him our great signs. Allah Akbar. Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam stood. What did he say? Allah Ta'ala show me everything. Show me. Nuri Ibrahim Malakut al Samawati wal Allah Ta'ala in the Quran said, We showed Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam the kingdom of the heaven and the earth. But what Nabi al Islam was shown was greater than what Ibrahim al Islam was shown. He saw the he seen the heavens and the earth. Dunya and Asman. Malakut as samawat Allah. Heaven and earth. Nabi al Islam was shown greater than all of this. Ghaybun of you. I will come to this point. Allah. First heaven, they entered. They found Sayyidullah Adam alayhi salatu salam in the first heaven. Hazrat Adam alayhi salam is there. When they would look to the right side, they would smile. When they look to the left side, they would cry. The Bilis now asked why. Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu salam, every Nabi they met in the heavens, they said, Welcome, O pious brother. Yani here this was a khuwaf in Nabuwa. This was the brotherhood in Nabuwa. That's why they referred. Welcome, welcome. First Jannah, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam is there. Ulama have written the wisdoms behind why Adam alayhi salam was in the first, Isa alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam in the second, Idris alayhi salam in the third, Yusuf alayhi salam in the fourth, Harun alayhi salam in the fifth, Musa alayhi salam in the sixth, and Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam in the seventh. They wrote why? Different reasons. They said Adam alayhi salam was in the first because he's the father of all men. Father of all the humans. So he was in the first heaven. He met first. Nabi alayhi salatu salam. Remember, they have all read namaz behind Nabi alayhi salam in Masjid al-Aqsa. How quick? Adam alayhi salam is in Masjid al-Aqsa, now he's in the first heaven. That was quick, man. Right? Very quick. Okay, they met them, gave salam. Said, why do you smile when you look right and cry on left? He said, when I look to my right, these are my children in Jannah. They make me happy. When I look at my left, See, a father feels this. This kashash a father has. Adam al Islam has this kashash for his children, Allah. We are all the children of Adam al Islam. He feels, when he looks to the left, he says, These are people in Jahannam. They make me sad. Allah. Nabi al Islam is shown the first heaven. Everything. Then they ascend 500 years between the first grade to the second. Second level of Jannah. And they arrive there, knock on the door. Who is it? Jibreel, who is with you? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Being sent? We've been sent. The second Jannah is open. The Bilis Salaam enters, they see Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam, Ibn al Khal. They are sitting there. Give salam, meet, welcome. And then the Bilis Salaam. Remember Hazrat Isa alayhi salam? Currently is in the second heaven as well. Why? Because he didn't die. And that Isa is still alive now. He's resurrected. He's been lifted to the heaven. And he shall return. When he will return, he will kill the Jal. When he will kill the Jal, he will rule for 40 years Aman Sakun. He will marry. When he will pass away, where will he go? He will do Ziyar of Rasulullah and he will be resting next to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Akbar. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam will visit Nabi alayhi salatu salam. Nabi alayhi salam clearly said this that Isa alayhi salam will do my ziyarah at my grave. If Hazrat Isa alayhi salam can do ziyarah, then can we do his ziyarah? Can we go and visit him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa barak wa sallam? Of course. Okay. Nabi alayhi salatu salam, third heaven. Hazrat Idris alayhi salam is there. Knocked on door. Who is it? Jibreel, who is with you? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the boy is that? Have you been sent? Of course we've been sent. Oh. وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَقَانًا عَالِيًا Allah 
Quran the Quran said we've raised him to Makam Ali, high Makam, high Daraja station. Hazrat Idris a place where no human has been. That was his Makam. When they went from the third heaven, they went to the fourth heaven. Knocked on the door, who is it? Jibreel, who is with you? You were the Rasulullah. Been sent, been sent. And Hazrat Yusuf was there. Shatr al Husan. Husan and Jamal of Yusuf. They are there. Allah Akbar. Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, beauty, half of Husan and Jamal, given to Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. Then, they ascend, meet him, greet him, give salam, and then they go to the fifth heaven. When they arrive there, knock on the door, who is it? Jibreel, who is with you? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Bin Sa'id, Bin Sa'id. Who is that? Harun alayhi salam. Harun alayhi salam is the deputy of Musa alayhi salam. So he is Makam. Ibn Hajar writes all the asrar, I have the book in my car, all the wisdoms for why they were in the center. Why was Yusuf alayhi salam in the fourth heaven? Because there were three levels above him, three levels before him, below him, and he was Shatr al Husan, he was half. Him. And everyone will enter Jannah in the surah of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. That's why he's halfway. He's not neither six, neither two, he's halfway. Because half of beauty he gave. Half of Husan is with Yusuf, half is with the Makhluk. Allah Ta'ala created. Allah Akbar. Harun alayhi salam met them, greeted them, went to the sixth heaven. Ascended with Hazrat Jibreel, knocked on the gate. Who is it? Jibreel, who is with you? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's very high. Bin Sayyid, of course. Musa alayhi salam is there. Allah Akbar. Musa alayhi salam is in the grave and in the masjid and in the sixth heaven. All on one night. Brothers and sisters, if Musa alayhi salam can be in three different places on one night, yani he is hazir in three different places at one night, then what do you think is the maqam of the Imam of Musa alayhi salam? <laughs> but you think he can't be in ten places at one time? People say he's not hazir and hazir, how can he be here? Yani ruhani and spiritually we are talking, Rasulullah alayhi salam is every. And the Jismani and the Peri Islam is under the Qumbat al Hazra. They are in a Rada to Sharifa. We know that, we accept that. But Ruhani, spiritually. <coughs> Look, let me clarify this Mas'ala with logic. Me and you humans, our Akal, our mind, has reached such a level that Bazariya mobile phone, through this mobile phone, I can FaceTime. How many people? I can sky. How many people? Where are my sap? Where is my picture being portrayed? Science has done so much tarakki that I am sat here, but hundreds of people can watch me from around the world from one place. Yes. My image is in a hundred places. If science has can be able to do this, put me in a hundred places at one time, then how can you challenge the Qudrat and Taqat of Allah? <laughs> Allah gives this ability to them that they can be in a hundred places at one time. This is all the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mu'jiza. These are the miracles of the Anbiya and Kramat of the Awliya. Allah ta'ala gives this power. If man can do this, who made man? Allah ta'ala. Was man greater than Allah? No. Can never be. Logical example of Hazir and Nas. That will go to but remember, this one Mi'raj and Nabi story, every single Nukta of Akida is dealt with. Hayatul Anbiya, Ilmul Ghayb, Azir Nazir, Nur Bashar, everything is clarified in here. But if only we had the Shu'ud, only we could think this. Allah Akbar. Brothers and sisters, they met Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam cried. Began to cry. Why are you crying, Musa? He said, I'm crying because I've read of his Ummah. His Ummah, he will have the largest followers on the day of Qiyamah. I won't have no followers. My followers will not be in number of his followers. Kash, if only I was an Ummati in his Ummah as well. Even the Anbiya wanted to be Ummatis of Rasulullah Brothers and sisters, you should consider yourself honored, fortunate, khushkismat. 
that Allah Ta'ala made me and you in Ummah Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's chosen us to be in this Ummah. We are fortunate and honored. Prophets wanted to, they cried to be in this Ummah. The Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah has bestowed this honor. And yet we give this title away. We prefer to be referred as gangsters. We prefer to be referred as bad boys. Brother, you should have fathered and walked around and said that I am from the Ummah of Rasulullah Islam. Brother, there's no greater thing that I am an Ummati of that Ummah and that Nabi that other Anbiya would cry to be in his Ummah. That's the honor Allah has given me that he hasn't given to nobody. Allah Akbar. When they met Musa Islam greeted, Musa Islam gave Iltija, ascended to the seventh heaven. Seventh heaven, they arrived there. Allah Akbar. Hazrat Ibrahim Khalil Rahman alayhi salatu wa salam is there resting next to Baytul Ma'mood. Resting there smiling, old man, Bazur, beautiful long beard, white hair, resting. Why is he in the seventh? Because he's Abu Anbiya. He's father of all the prophets. The Banu Israeli prophets came from him. <coughs> Nabi Ali Salaam, all of them. He was the father of all the prophets. <laughs> Allah Akbar. Ibrahim Ali Salaam, Nabi Ali Salaam meets them. Greetings, oh my son. My son, why? Because they were the grandson of Hazrat Ibrahim Ali Salaam. Descendant. Greetings, welcome. And you know what Hazrat Ibrahim Ali Salaam said? He said, when you go back, tell your ummah that Ibrahim gives salam to them. Hazrat Ibrahim salam gives salam to your ummah. This is why when we read Durood Shrif in our namaz, we give salam back. We send Durood and salam upon him. Baraka upon him. Because he gave us, we return. Allah. They went to Baytul Mahmur, they read namaz there as well. Remember Nabi Ali Salaam led all the prophets in prayer. And they led all the Murani Frishta in prayer as well. Every single angel read namaz, namaz behind Nabi Ali Salaam in the heavens as well. Remember this. That they did two jamaat, one for the Anbiya, one for the angels. And the Jibreel read behind them. Mikail, Israfil, Israel, everyone. Allah Akbar. Nabi Ali Salaam was shown <coughs> taken on a tour of full paradise. Everything was shown. <laughs> Nabi Ali Salaam said, I passed by a tree, beautiful. There were houses in Jannah, there were palaces in Jannah, rubies, diamonds. They came back and described everything. Allah Ta'ala said, Le nuriyahu min ayah. See, Hazrat Ibrahim Ali Salaam was shown everything in dunya. They were shown it. Nabi Ali Salaam was taken to see it. With their own eyes, it's different. See, Hazrat Ibrahim Ali Salaam didn't do a mirage. They didn't go to the heavens and Nabi Ali Salaam was shown everything. They seen heaven. They went and they visited hell. Jahannam, they seen everything in there. People being punished. They seen an angel there. The angel who is the gatekeeper of Jahannam. And he didn't smile, he's never smiled. Never ever has he smiled since Allah has created him. Nabi Islam asked Jibreel, why? As the Jibreel said, Allah Ta'ala told the Jibreel to tell Rasulullah Islam that he's been created like this. But if he was ever to smile at anyone, he would smile at me. He would only smile at me. Nobody. Maqam of Rasulullah Islam. Shown heaven, hell, barza. Nabi Islam seen the azab people were receiving. Nabi Salaam Salaam said, we passed by a group of people whose heads were being smashed by rocks. When they would smash, they would make it back together and smash it again. And they would keep doing this to Qiyam. Nabi Salaam said, Jibreel, who are these? Nabi As Jibreel said, these are people from your ummah. These are your ummatis who didn't used to read their namaz. This is how Allah will punish them. Then they went and they walked on and they seen another group of people. A group of women who were hanging off their chests. Nabi Salaam said, who are these? He said, these are the women in your ummah who used to commit zina, adultery. This is their punishment. Then they went by and they seen men, people 
We got large stomachs and walking side to side. They did it. And inside there, there were snakes eating them. The Bilis Salam said, who are these? And the Bilis said, these are those people in your ummah who used to eat soothe riba. They would eat interest money. They would take interest, eat it, and this is the azab Allah is giving. And this azab will continue to kill. Then they passed by another group of women who were hanging off the hair. The hair scalp was being ripped apart. As Ya Rasulullah, oh Jibreel, who are these? These are those women in your ummah who didn't do parda. They never used to cover their hair. They would walk out without anything. Today, what is going to be the state of our people? The Bili Salaam went by and seen another group of people. Those people were being punished. When they were being punished, they were eating, there was fresh meat, cooked meat, and there was raw, dirty, disgusting, stinking meat. And they were eating, they were mixing. What were they doing? They would mix the halal and haram. No kadal. They would have a halal woman, haram woman at one time. And this is the azab, they were eating this. Nabi Islam seen the punishments for all these things. They came back and they told us everything. Allahu Akbar. When this was shown, Nabi Islam arrived at Sidra to Muntah. When they arrived at Sidra, Sidra is what? Is a tree. Sidratul Muntaha is a tree that is so, its shadow is so big that it would take 500 years on a horse for a person on a horse to ride and he still would have reached the end. <coughs> Seven heavens, Sidra, above Sidra Arsh, above the Arsh of Allah, Allah Makran, Allah Zama, Kaaba Qosai, all of this. Nabi Salaam arrived at Sidra. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stops that. Don't go forward. Jibreel stops. Allah Akbar Jibreel, why have you stopped? Why have you stopped here? All this way you've been a company on my journey, you stopped here. Allah Akbar. What was the intiha of Jibreel? Was the ibtida of Rasulullah. Where Jibreel ends. His maqam in Mustafa now begins. You see, all this journey that's happened, understand this through the Bashariyat. Now what's coming ahead is Nuraniyat. It's Hakikat, beyond our comprehension and imagination. Allah, Jibreel, why have you stopped? Will you not come any further with me? One of the wisdoms, why has Jibreel stopped here? There are many wisdoms. Allah Ta'ala wanted to tell the people this, okay, those who will read this waqiyah after, do not think the Prophet didn't know where to go. That's why Jibreel was with him all the way. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Jibreel took him all this way, was shown everything, showed everything, halal, he stopped there. Now what do you think the Prophet doesn't know what's ahead? Jibreel has never been ahead. He will never know what is ahead. So Hazrat Jibreel says, my job has finished here. Now only Allah and His Rasul know what's ahead. <laughs> See, Nabi Salaam is going somewhere where no angel, no human, nobody has been. Nobody has been. Allah. What is ahead is Noor. Hazrat Jibreel stops there. Nabi Salaam Jibril Jibreel, anymore? Ya Rasulullah, no. See, if I in tajawuz, I go any further. You know my my wings, they would turn to dust. Why? The noor that I am created from cannot comprehend that noor that is ahead of me. It will destroy me. This is mentioned in Asiratul Halabi by Imam Nuruddin al Halabi. Is it Jibreel stop that? This is now the intiha of Jibreel. But is now the ibtida of Habibullah Rasulullah. Allah. Mukhtasar <coughs> and final few points, then we'll read our Masha. As a Jibreel stop. <laughs> Jibreel, is there anything you want? See Vasila, look that. Is there anything you want me to ask for you? As a Jibreel didn't say, I'll ask directly, I don't need nobody. As a Jibreel didn't say, I will ask directly, I will ask Allah, I don't need you to ask. No. As a Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, I have one guzarish, one iltija, one dua. 
What is it, Jibreel? That on the day of Qiyamah, when your Ummah will be passing by the Pulsira, that is in Jannah, in Jahannam, and they will have to walk. Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah Ta'ala that He gives me, Jibreel, this rank that I can put my wings under the feet of your Ummah these are taken to Jannah. That I can do khidmat of your Ummah on the day of Qiyamah. Nabi Salam leaves Jibreel there. I, my Iman and Aqidah is this. My Iman and Aqidah is this. That even the clothes of Rasulullah Islam are greater than Hazrat Jibreel. Why? Because Hazrat Jibreel stopped there. He didn't go further. Nabi Salam took their na'alain, took their clothes, everything they had. When Jibreel couldn't go, the blessed jubba of Rasulullah Islam had been. Allah As a Jibreel stopped there, he couldn't go further. His maqam ends. Even the clothes, the na'alain of Rasulullah are greater than everything in this dunya about Allah. Greater, my iman and aqidah. Why? Those na'alain, al-sharifain, those na'al mubarak, those sandals have been, well, no human, no angel, no one has been. Look, when Hazrat Musa salam went to see Allah, went to speak to Allah Almighty, Allah Ta'ala said, Fakhla, na'alayn. If Musa take your na'alayn of fear, innaka bil wadil muqaddas itwa. You are now in a muqaddas wadi, in dunya. You are in a blessed valley in this world. Take your shoes off. You can't wear your shoes here. Allah Akbar, bring me one narration. But Allah Ta'ala said to Nabi Ali salam, Okay, Habib, never mind dunya, never mind asman, never mind sidratul muntaha, never mind arsha ilahi, kaba kosaini awadra, okay, Habib, take your na'alain off, no. Oh my beloved, you come with your na'alain, your jubba, everything, kamli. You come as you are, you don't have to take nothing from Allah. Allah Ta'ala said, Musa, remove your shoes. But when it came to Maqam and Mustafa, Allah Ta'ala didn't say remove, leave them on. Allah Akbar. Those na'alain that even the arsh of Allah Almighty has kissed. Those na'alain that have been to la maqam, la zaman. Kaaba kawseini au adra. Allah Ta'ala said, Thumma dana, fata dalla, faqana kaaba kawseini au adra. Allah Ta'ala said, Thumma dana, they got kareeb, closer. Fata dalla, even closer. It's like, you know, two arrows. You know when two arrows hit one another? It is like two arrows going into one another. Oh, Adna, even closer than that. Allah Ta'ala in this ayat is describing his meeting with his Habib. Allah Akbar. Veils were lifted. The hijabat were lifted. لَقَدْ رَآ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبَرِ Allah Ta'ala said, no doubt, he's seen from the greatest signs of his law. Brothers and sisters, فَأَوْحَا إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَا Allah Ta'ala said, he revealed to his servant everything. فَأَوْحَا إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ He revealed to his servant مَا أَوْحَا What he wanted to reveal. Everything. إِلْمُ الْعَوَّلِنَا وَالْآخِرِ Knowledge of the first and the last. Allah Akbar. Allah Ta'ala describes in the Quran, مَا كَذَبَ الْفُعَادُ مَا رَأَى The heart didn't lie at what it seemed. مَا زَعْدَ الْبَسَرُ وَمَا تَغَى Allah Ta'ala says the eyes, they didn't move, didn't blink, didn't go left or right. And what was revealed before him? Musa A.S. said, Ya Allah, أَرِنِي أَنْزُرْ إِلَيْهِ Rabbi Arini, let me see you. I want to see you. Show me your majesty. Allah Ta'ala said, Lam Tarani Musa now. When he came to Maqam Mustafa, rank of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Nabi Alayhi Salaam stood beyond Sidra, beyond Arsh Ilan, Kaaba Kosein, Uwadna, La Makan, La Zaman. And Allah Ta'ala lifted the veil and Nabi Alayhi Salaam did Didar of Allah. Nabi Alayhi Salaam seen Allah Ta'ala. Allah Akbar. You know there are so many things. There is time you 
can't come even do justice to this war here. Because I have to stop. You have to read your Isha. Unless you give me Ijazat, I will not go any further than this. Thank you. I think he wants me to stop. <laughs> See, if I stop here, this is like the peak of the journey. This is the peak. Alay, there's so much Akai still. Siddiq Akbar Zakida Iman. Abu Jahl, what is Zakida? Anaki Nabili Salam and Musa Salam, why? Nine times, why? Tofa of Miraj. So many things still left. I will leave my speech here. And inshallah, next year, I will come back and continue. I think it's best I do this because the Buzurgs have to be their Isha. So do the youngsters. That doesn't mean only the Buzurgs. So do the youngsters. Allah Ta'ala, give Jazayah Khair to those who have arranged and organized this. Allah Ta'ala, open the secrets to us so that we may understand the greatest night in Rasulullah Islam, Al-Israq Al-Mihraj. وأقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله شكرا ما شاء الله بوت بيعني أن دازمي